I'm Ken Hellevang, Agricultural Engineer with the NDSU Extension Service. And we've got a demonstration that we're going to walk through that shows some of the principles involved uh, moving air through grain and through bins. Uh, and it's important for us to understand some of the terminology as well as some of those principles so that we make sure that we select the right fan and get the job done that we want in moving the air through the bin. One of the first terms that we'll hear people talk about as we're starting to work with moving air through bins or, or fans is a term called static pressure. And they'll refer to that in inches of water. And frequently you'll wonder, well, why did, why did they talk about inches of water? Well, it comes from the device that we use to measure that static pressure. And that is a unit that is called a U-tube manometer. A U-tube manometer can be as simple as just a piece of flexible tubing stapled in a U-shape, put some water in there, and in this case we've got some food coloring in there so that's easier to see. And then when we put a pressure on one side, it'll cause the water level to move down on that side, up on the other, and then we measure the distance between those two water levels in inches. And in this case, we've got marks on here every quarter of an inch. So as I blow on this end, we see that one level go down, the other level up, and we're able to measure the static pressure. Now there are, are instruments that you can purchase that will also measure the static pressure that have a readout in a dial, but they can be as simple as this. The other part of our YouTube manometer is a something that goes into the bin to measure the static pressure wherever we're going to be uh, working. And in this case, we'll be putting that in the underfloor area. And they again can be as simple as piece of, of tubing with some small holes drilled all the way around that tubing. And then it's important that we close the end of the tube because what we're measuring is static pressure. We don't want air blowing directly into the end or we would be measuring a velocity pressure. And so it's important to have that end closed, those holes all the way around the uh, piece of tubing. That then is placed into the bin in that underfloor area, wherever it is that we're going to measure that static pressure. And in this, I've got the tubing in two pieces to make it more portable and I'll just hook those two pieces together. In our demonstration, we're going to use just small model bins, but everything that will occur with these small models will be the same as what would happen in a 50,000 bushel bin out on the farm or at an elevator. We're gonna use one that has been cut in half and has plexiglass on the front so that we can see the, uh, the grain depth and the things that are happening in this bin. This would be a bin that has a full perforated floor as we would use in a lot of drying bins or air bins today. And in our model, what we have is just a, a whole floor that has many, many, many holes punched into that floor to create that perforated floor. But it would perform similar to what a normal perforated floor would. We'll also use a duct, uh, and today we're just using a piece of flexible tubing that we will be connecting the fan to the bin. And for today's demonstration, we're using a small uh, blower. It's a small squirrel cage or centrifugal fan. And this fan will work nice for the demonstration. It's very important that we understand the operating performance or characteristics of each of the fans. We need to know what airflow they can deliver, what static pressures they're designed to work against, and we'll be talking about that as we go through the demonstration. Okay, now we have the, the fan hooked up to the bin. We've got our YouTube manometer hooked up into the underfloor area of that bin but we're not moving any airflow. And so with no airflow, we would expect that there's no resistance to airflow or static pressure. And if we look now on the YouTube manometer, both of the water levels are at the same uh, height. And so that would indicate that we have no static pressure.
Now I'm going to plug the fan in. We'll start the airflow. We can hear the fan running. We've got air going through the bin and now we'll come back and what we're measuring is the resistance to the airflow through that perforated floor or it's the amount of static pressure that is developing under the floor to move the air up through the floor. And now as we look at the YouTube manometer, what we find is that there is one mark difference between those two water levels. So that indicates to us that the static pressure going through that floor is a quarter of an inch, or the resistance to airflow going through is a quarter of an inch, or the amount of push that the fan is needing to develop is a quarter of an inch. Next thing we'll do then is to look at the amount of air that's coming through. And we've got a roof that we'll put on the bin. But let's take a look now and see what effect that roof has on the static pressure. Every piece of equipment has an effect on the performance of that system. So we have the air coming through the floor and coming up through the bin roof and we'll want to look and see what the static pressure is with that occurring. Okay, what we see is that there was a slight increase in the static pressure, just over a quarter of an inch. So that indicates then that the resistance to the floor and the roof is a little over a quarter of an inch. And again, that's what we would like to see We'd like to see the amount of resistance created by the floor and the roof be very little because we want to use the fan power to move air through the grain, not through the bin itself. Next thing we'll do then is to measure the airflow. And to use, measure the airflow, what I'm going to use is just a pinwheel because it gives us a nice visual uh, observation of what that airflow is going to be. So as we fold that over the like air coming out of the bin, it's spinning that pinwheel, and we've got good airflow coming through the bin. Okay, now we're going to add some grain to the bin and look at what happens as we start putting grain into our bin. For our demonstration today, we're using hard red spring wheat. Uh, each type of grain will have its own characteristic as far as static pressure. The wheat, with it being a smaller kernel, uh, packs fairly dense and is fairly difficult to move air through it, so it has a higher static pressure or resistance to airflow in comparison to, let's say, corn or soybeans, where we have a larger kernel, it's easier then to move the airflow through. One of the misconceptions people sometimes have though is that if I have a bin size for wheat and then put corn in there that I'm automatically going to get a lot more airflow, maybe twice as much airflow through the corn bin. And that isn't necessarily true because each fan has its own operating characteristic. And we'll talk about that later. But if we're using, for example, a high speed centrifugal fan that is designed to develop the high pressures, we may see very little difference in airflow between when that fan is attached to a bin of wheat and a bin of corn. It's important that we always level the grain so we get uniform airflow coming through that bin. We'll put the bin roof back on and then we'll take a look at what the static pressure is so now we're looking at the resistance to airflow through the floor, through a shallow layer of wheat, and out through the bin. And what we're seeing is we have one, two, three marks that we're seeing about three quarters of an inch of static pressure. So again, three quarters of an inch is the amount of pressure the fan is having to develop or the resistance to airflow through the floor, through that shallow layer of wheat, and then out through the top of the bin. Okay, let's check the amount of airflow now coming through. And we still got quite a bit of airflow, but we can tell that that pinwheel has slowed down. And that's what we would expect as the static pressure increases, the amount of airflow that that fan can deliver decreases.
Now, what we saw was a fairly quick change in static pressure. As we went from just the floor at a, at a little over a quarter of an inch to the shallow layer up to three quarters of an inch, that is a, a big increase in static pressure with just a shallow layer. And that's because we get static pressure or resistance to airflow depending on two different things. It depends on the grain depth and the velocity of air going through that depth. Here we've got a shallow depth, but we've got a large velocity or high velocity. So here we're seeing a high static pressure just because of the high velocity going through that shallow layer. Frequently people will say, well, can I target where, how deep I can fill my bin by looking at static pressure? And unfortunately we can't because that static pressure will come up to near the fan's capability very quickly because we're moving a lot of airflow through. So let's add some more wheat and see what happens as we add wheat. We'll go ahead and, and fill the bin about two-thirds full. Level that bin off again. We'll put the roof on and then we'll go ahead and check what that static pressure is. Okay, here now if we look at the static pressure, we're a little below this line, a little above that line, and so if we count that, we've got one, two, three, and roughly a half over each, so we're almost four marks or one inch of static pressure. So we did see the static pressure go up some as we added additional wheat, but only a small amount. Let's see what happens to the quantity of air coming through. And what we see is that the pinwheel has slowed way down, indicating that we are affecting the amount of air coming through as we increase that static pressure. And that's what we would expect to happen. So let's go ahead now and fill this bin completely full. We level the bin, we put the bin roof back on, and then we'll go check the static pressure. As we look at the static pressure again, we're at one, two, three marks, and then about half above and half below. So we're still at about an inch of static pressure. So we really didn't see the static pressure increase as we added that last amount of wheat. And that's indicating to us that the maximum capability of this fan, this blower that we're using for the demonstration, is about an inch of static pressure. That as we added more wheat, we're not seeing any increase. And so it really emphasizes how critical it is that we understand the characteristics or performance capabilities of each of the fans that we're putting on the bin. Let's take a look now and see what the airflow is coming out of this bin and the pinwheel is turning but very very slowly indicating that yes we've got air coming through but there's not very much air coming through and so again if, as we saw that depth increase the static pressure increase the air velocity is going down and we've reached the maximum capabilities of this fan okay we're going to take a look now at a, a tall bin and really see how this compares to the bin that we have been using Again, uh, the bin shape is important. Here we have a, a tall bin, relatively narrow, and this is a type of bin that we'll frequently see used for grain storage. This one has a perforated floor, uh, similar to what the other one has. We'll start out by putting the manometer tube under the floor and check what the static pressure is just going through the floor of this bin. We now have the YouTube manometer probe underneath the floor, no airflow going. And as we look at the manometer, what we see is that indeed the, the water levels are equal, indicating no static pressure underneath that floor. So now we'll go ahead and turn the fan on and look at what the static pressure is going through just that floor. Okay, let's check the YouTube manometer and we're 
one, two, roughly three marks between the two water levels, indicating three quarters of an inch of static pressure. If that fan is having to develop three quarters of an inch of pressure underneath the floor to push the air through that floor. And since this fan has only got the capability of moving about one inch of pressure, we're using a lot of that fan's capability just on an empty bin to move the air through the floor. So that's an indication to us that our floor is undersized. So it is critical as we're selecting equipment to make sure that we have enough perforated area to handle the airflow. And typically what we'll use as kind of a rule of thumb is one square foot of perforated area for about 50 cubic feet of air per minute. Okay, let's put the bin roof on and see what that does to our static pressure. So now we've got our bin roof on and the floor and we're looking at the static pressure going through the floor and the roof. We're at one, two, three, a little bit over, so we did see an increase in the static pressure. Not a lot, but a little bit going through that uh, bin roof and the floor. Okay, let's check the amount of airflow coming out of this bin. Now remember that when we were at a full inch of static pressure on the other one, we had virtually no airflow or very little airflow coming out. When we've got roughly that same amount of static pressure, let's see what the airflow is. And it's really spinning that pinwheel. Probably faster than it has on any other time that we have checked. Well, why would that be? Well, frequently what I will get is calls that somebody tells me where they know that they've got good airflow coming out of their bin because they go up to the top of the roof and the, the air is whistling out, maybe even blowing their cap off. And I put a little bit of a, uh, a trick into this demonstration. Let's compare the size of the two openings on the bin roof. If we look at the size of the openings, what we'll find is that the opening on that small bin roof is very small relative to the size of the opening on the big roof. So we take the airflow, we crowd it down into a small hole, and it shows a lot of velocity. Not necessarily quantity of airflow, but speed of airflow. And so it's critical as we're working with airflow through these bins that we're aware of the, not only the velocity of airflow, but the quantity of airflow, which is a little more difficult to measure. Now what we will do is take and pour the wheat from the first bin into this bin and see what happens to the airflow going through this tall bin with the same quantity of wheat in that bin. So what we're looking at here is the static pressure through the floor, through the tall depth of wheat, out through the bin roof, and as we look at our manometer, we're looking at one, two, three marks, indicating that that fan is about its full static pressure, maybe even a shade less than what we saw before. Before, it, we were bouncing up to about an inch. This one, we're staying pretty constant, a little bit uh, over three quarters of an inch. Let's check the airflow and see how much air is coming through this bin. Okay, we're gonna check the airflow with our pinwheel as we pull that up there. We'll stop it. There's a little bit of airflow coming through, but not very much. What that is telling us is that even though this fan is working as hard as it can, we have exceeded really its capability of developing pressure and pushing it through the bin. Actually, if we listen to the fan, we can kind of hear the uh, airflow resistance, and let's do that. I'll unhook the tube from the bin, and let's listen what's happening to the noise on the fan. So we're off the bin, back onto the bin. We hear the noise, and then we move the duct again, and it's quiet. And part of the reason for that is that we have exceeded that fan's capability. What we were hearing was the air actually coming back out of the fan, that that fan wasn't able to develop enough pressure to push it into the bin, and so we're sitting there in essence spinning the wheels, churning on the air, some of it feeding back out of the bin.
and that's why we saw actually a slight reduction in static pressure was that we had exceeded that fan's capability to push the air through and it wasn't developing as much pressure underneath that floor. Okay, hopefully at this point you have a better understanding of what static pressure is, airflow performance going through the bin, through the bin roof, through the grain itself. These are all critical then as we select the appropriate fan for our application. It's going to be different if we're doing uh, natural air drying or if we're doing a, a low airflow aeration system. But with all of this, it's critical that we understand those principles. We're going to be looking at the different types of fans that are used for grain drying or grain aeration. And there are four different types of fans that we'll typically use. There's the axial, the inline centrifugal, low speed centrifugal and high speed centrifugal. And each of those fans has their unique operating characteristics or conditions that they perform best under. And we'll take a look at each of the different types of fans and, and what conditions they are, are best suited for. The first fan that we're gonna look at is an axial fan. Uh, sometimes people will refer to that as a propeller fan because when you look into the fan, what you see are propeller blades similar to what you would find on an airplane or whatever. And so this is an axial flow fan. And as you look in here, you'll see those blades. Uh, they'll have different shapes depending on the design, but that mounted into the round housing of the fan is what makes up our axial flow fan. These fans generally are going to be best suited where we're drying grain at relatively lower static pressures. Uh, typically, it'll depend on horsepower, but typically we're going to be looking at maybe five inches of static pressure or less. If we're talking a, a small fan, maybe uh, a horse, horse and a half fan, that might only be able to work at a static pressure of three inches. But when we're talking a grain drying fan, where we're talking five or 10 horsepower fans, those will generally be able to work uh, appropriately up to about uh, that five, even six inch static pressure range. And this fan has been very popular for corn and soybeans as long as we keep the grain depth shallow. But as we start getting greater depths, then we will exceed the capacity of that fan. One of the downsides of the axial fan is it's a uh, noisy fan. And so if you're working with a, a fan on a drying system in your farmyard, uh, sometimes people will shy away from this fan because it will be the loudest typically of the types of fans. The low speed centrifugal fan will be the quietest fan. There are three types of centrifugal fans. The low speed, high speed and inline centrifugal fan. And when we talk about centrifugal fans, what we're talking about are fans that have the centrifugal, or some people will refer to it as the squirrel cage impeller. Each of the three different centrifugal fans, again, have their own operating characteristics. The low speed centrifugal fan will rotate at 1750 RPM, the high speed at 3500, the inline at 3450. The low speed centrifugal fan is going to have the larger impeller. So physically in size, if we're looking at the same horsepower uh, fans, the low speed centrifugal fan will be the largest physical size. Because of that, the low speed centrifugal fan typically will perform best in what I call the mid range of static pressures from probably four to about seven inches of static pressure. The, again, it will depend on the, the fan horsepower. The larger the horsepower, the more static pressure that that fan can w develop. But with the low speed centrifugal fan or the traditional type fan that people re sometimes refer to it as, the, the air comes in the side, kind of through a bell-shaped inlet to the center of that centrifugal impeller, makes a 90 degree turn and then goes into the grain bin. This type of fan has is, is become very popular because it will perform very well on both bins of wheat and 
bins of corn. So if we're drying uh, corn, again, maybe at depths up to about 22, 23 feet, we'll keep the static pressure at a level that this fan will perform very well. And then when we fill the bin with wheat, it's still able to develop the pressure that's required to air dry wheat. This is a high speed centrifugal fan. With high speed, again, we're talking about the speed of rotation is 3,500 RPM. So this one typically will have, because of the higher RPM speed, the capability of developing higher static pressures. Uh, where the low speed, we said typically would be operated in the oh, roughly four to seven inch static pressure range. This fan really is designed to operate at the higher static pressures, probably at the seven to 10 inch static pressure range. But it is a physically smaller fan. Uh, the, previously, we were looking at a 10 horsepower low speed centrifugal fan. This one is a 25 horse high speed centrifugal fan. Even though it's a 25 horsepower, it's still physically smaller. That means that at the lower static pressures, it's not going to deliver as much airflow as the low speed centrifugal fan. It really is designed to operate at that higher static pressure. And we can look at the nameplate on the motor and on the fan to get some of that information. For example, this one has a, a, a fan stamp that shows that it is indeed a uh, fan that's rotating at 3,500 RPM so that it is a high speed centrifugal fan. The high speed centrifugal fan has the same uh, makeup as the low speed centrifugal fan. It has the centrifugal impeller. The air comes in through the side through a bell shaped inlet, makes a 90 degree turn and then goes into the grain bin. The third type of centrifugal fans is the inline centrifugal fan. Again, it has the centrifugal impeller. It has a bell shaped inlet that's bringing the air into the center. But now this one is mounted in a round fan housing similar to the axial fan. So the air does not make the 90 degree turn like it does in the low speed and the high speed centrifugal fan. The air comes in, goes through the impeller and then is reflected off of the housing and back into the grain bin. So I refer to it as kind of a hybrid between the traditional centrifugal fan and an axial fan and the performance ends up being somewhat similar as well. Uh, it works very well at that mid static pressure range, somewhere between typically four to about seven, eight inches of static pressure, depending on fan horsepower. Again, if we're talking a, a three horsepower inline centrifugal fan, it might do well up to about five inches of static pressure, where if we're talking a 10 or 15 horsepower fan, it'll likely be able to develop higher static pressures. One of the things with an inline centrifugal fan that you will find is that uh, it's going to be less expensive when we can make the comparison to the other centrifugal fans. If we look at purchase costs, typically the axial fan is going to be the least expensive. The high speed and low speed fans will be pretty similar and then the inline centrifugal will be between the, the high speed, low speed and the axial fan. The other thing that you'll find with an inline centrifugal fan is that frequently it'll carry a dual rating on the motor horsepower. So for example, it might say 10-15 horsepower. It really is a 15 horsepower fan, but the reason it carries that dual rating is that it is a 10 horse motor, but because we have the air going over that motor, cooling the motor, we're able to load it as a 15 horsepower motor. It's going to use electricity uh, similar to a 15 horsepower. It's performing as a 15 horsepower fan and 15 horsepower motor. And so this fan, it would be a 15 horsepower fan and operate as a 15 horsepower fan even though it has that dual rating. So operates at 3450 RPM. So when we make a comparison in noise, Typically, the axial fan will be the most noisy fan. The low speed centrifugal fan operating at, at 1750 would probably be the quietest fan. And then the high speed, uh, both the inline centrifugal and high speed centrifugal would then in, be in between those two. So it's critical as you're selecting your fan 
to really know what the performance of that fan is, select the fan based on the operating condition that it's going to be working against in order to get the most efficient fan operation.